Well, 2017 may be winding down, but that is certainly not the case for the Russia investigation. Bloomberg is reporting that President Trump's former chief strategist, Steve Bannon, and his former campaign manager, Corey Lewandowski, have been asked to testify before the House Intelligence Committee. Both men were sent letters this week requesting interviews for sometime early next month. According to Bloomberg, the invitation, which didn't come in the form of a subpoena compelling them to testify, was for a voluntary interview in the committee's offices, which means it would be held behind closed doors, an official familiar with the panel's schedule said. NBC News is reporting that the Intelligence Committee questioned the president's longtime assistant, Rona Graff, today in New York. The committee's closed-door meeting with Graff, who was Trump's gatekeeper at Trump Tower for more than three decades, is the uh, second one involving a Trump associate this week. Felix Sater, a Russian-American businessman and former Trump associate, was also questioned. Both Graff and Sater, Sater met with the committee at an undisclosed location in New York over the objections of Democrats who wanted their interviews held in Washington, D.C. Meanwhile, House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi concerned that Republicans are pushing to end the House intelligence investigation has written to, written to Speaker Paul Ryan urging him to keep the probe open. Ryan's spokeswoman responded in part, quote, to suit her political agenda, Leader Pelosi would like to see this investigation go on forever. And all of these developments with the congressional investigations are happening as we're still awaiting details of the highly anticipated meeting between President Trump's lawyers and special counsel Robert Mueller's investigators. According to several reports, the two teams were supposed to meet at some point this week. Joining me now are Betsy Woodruff, the politics reporter for The Daily Beast, and Paul Butler, law professor at Georgetown University and a former federal prosecutor. They're both MSNBC contributors. Betsy, let me start with you. The, this, this back and forth between Pelosi and Ryan about the House Intelligence Committee uh, investigation, I think it would strike most lay people as strange because we know that this investigation is still ongoing. We know from uh, Robert Mueller. We even know from the Senate side, which seemed they, the, the Republicans and Democrats seem to play better uh, on the Senate side than they do on the House side. So the idea that Republicans on the House side want to wrap this up quickly does smell a little of politics. Certainly, without a doubt. And the fact that Paul Ryan's office would suggest that Democrats are the only ones who could potentially be, be charged with allegations of playing politics when it comes to this investigation is on its face uh, a little goofy. That said, of course, one thing that we know for sure about the House Intelligence Committee's Russia probe is that they're getting a lot of really interesting information. And it's an interesting dynamic with this particular committee because on the one hand, it's the investigation that's had the most major, major hiccups, right? Devin Nunes' controversial trip, to midnight trip to the White House. We've had lots and lots of rolling skirmishes between Adam Schiff, the top Democrat on the committee, and Nunes, who's the top Republican on the committee. Lots of very public airing of grievances, yep. lots of leaks to media. At the same time, though, this committee is finding out lots of interesting stuff. They're getting tons of documents. They're interviewing very high-profile witnesses. They're releasing transcripts of those interviews. A lot of what we know is based on this investigation. Investigation. And that may be why Republicans are a little bit nervous about the prospect of it, of it continuing much longer. Uh, notably, uh, the House, uh, the Senate uh, Intelligence Chairman Richard Byrd did not go to the White House earlier this week for the celebration about the tax bill, saying that while this investigation is undergoing, he's he's keeping his distance. Paul, uh, Mike Pence talked to CBS today about Michael Flynn, and I thought this was notable. Let's let's listen to what he said. Just clarify how you understand what happened with Mike Flynn when he was fired. Did you know he had lied to the FBI? What I can tell you is I knew that he lied to me. And, um, uh, and I know the president made the right decision with regard to him. Paul, you're a former prosecutor. That answer wouldn't work in court. You'd, because you'd press not, him. it's not responsive. Objection, Your Honor. Tell the witness to answer the question. Right. Did you know that Flynn lied to the FBI? Right. Uh, up to now, uh, Pence's defense has been, I don't know nothing about nothing. Right. He didn't know about the WikiLeaks. He didn't know about Trump Jr.'s meeting with the Russian lawyer. And he didn't know about Flynn's discussions about the sanctions. Again, that's starting to look a little 
thin, especially now that Mueller is talking to Flynn. So Flynn apparently has told Mueller stuff that makes him want to have a little sit down with the vice president. Where does that tell you this is going? Just to, with respect to the conversation we were just having about the House Intel Committee wanting to wrap it up, others wanting to keep it going. On the Mueller side, this got really interesting with the Flynn deal. Indeed. So the Hill investigations are political explicitly, so that means they're more transparent. We don't know how long Mueller is going to continue the investigation. We know he's got two people under indictment, so it's at least another year. Again, Trump's lawyers have floated this beautiful, twisted fantasy that the investigation is going to be over. First they said Thanksgiving, then they said uh -huh. Christmas. Now they're saying the new year. It's very unlikely. This is going to go on well into 2019. Senator uh, Warner, uh, Betsy, on Thursday was at an event that was hosted by Axios, and he said that the Senate investigation into this is the most important thing he's ever done in his life. Let's listen. We've not reached any conclusions, but the importance of what we're doing, I said a year ago, this is the most important thing I'll ever work on. I feel that more strongly today than even a year ago. Betsy, make sense of this for us, because for a lot of Americans, this has been going on for a while. They haven't, they, they've seen things happen in the Mueller investigation and, the, and, and in the other investigations, but a lot of people haven't seen exactly what they're looking for. So how do uh, Warner and the Democrats continue to keep the interest in this going and the support for, for their investigations going? I don't think there's much dearth of interest, but I think an important thing for people to understand is that there's a whole lot about the, the nature of the connections between the Kremlin and the American political process that we just don't know. Now, we do know that Capitol Hill has been much leakier than the Mueller probe when it comes to sort of telegraphing what they're working on, what they've found out. At the same time, though, there's a lot of interesting information that has not been leaked, and Elijah Cummings indicated that about a week, week, a couple weeks ago, when his committee, the Oversight and Government Reform Committee, basically said that they'd known about a really controversial conversation Mike Flynn had had, I believe, from the dais of the Capitol during the inauguration that related to business dealings. Cummings' committee sat on that information for months. It did not leak because they were deferring to Mueller and to his team. We can say with a lot of confidence mm -hmm. that Warner and Democrats are doing the same thing. In fact, I believe in that same Axios interview, Warner actually said that he expects there to be more indictments coming out of Mueller's team. That means that Warner probably knows a significant amount about the trajectory of where Mueller's going, what information he might have, and additional criminal liabilities for folks in Trump's orbit. It's not going anywhere. And from an uh, investigative perspective, Paul, uh, while there is some disarray on the House side uh, and there's partisanship in Congress, they do seem to be working the right way with Mueller's investigation. Yeah, so they're cooperating. Reportedly, every document that the in Senate and House committees get, they also share with the Mueller special counsel. So that's what you want to happen. You don't want there to be competition. You don't want it to be explicitly political. So here to now, here to four, it seems like the system is working well. Uh, Paul, I want to ask you quickly, the Washington Post uh, reporting on uh, a ruling tonight by the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals on uh, the, the President Trump travel ban. This has just come in. A federal appeals court panel on Friday ruled that President Trump's third entry ban violates the law. The three-judge panel with the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit ruled that Trump had again exceeded his lawful authority in issuing the latest ban and they had not made a legally sufficient finding that the entry of those blocked would be detrimental to the interests of the United States. Interesting ruling, limited effect at the moment. The Ninth Circuit, three panel uh, judge, three, two, three judges on the panel, they go in for the Trump administration procedurally. They say he exceeded his powers with his ban. He doesn't have that right to do all of that uh, as president. And substantively, they say it's discrimination on the basis of national origin. That's unconstitutional. But you're right, practically, the Supreme Court's already reviewing this, so we have to wait and see what the court decides. Paul, thank you very much for joining us. Betsy, you too. Uh, best of the season for you in America. Christmas to both of you. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.